with its unlimited horizons, has for centuries beckoned man to travel to distant, unknown ports. Over 400 years ago, Ferdinand Magellan crossed the Atlantic and sailed into she named the Pacific Ocean. Before Magellan finally reached the Philippine Islands in the exotic Orient, he had been at sea for more than three and one half trying months. The Orient was then opened up to the Western world. Today, in our 20th century air age, the Orient is only 33 hours from New York. Northwest Orient Airlines follows the Great Circle Route, shortest, fastest route to the Orient. It's difficult to realize that today you're in New York and you can be in the Orient. From Times Square to Fujiyama is to travel around half the world in a mere 33 hours. Your magic carpet leaving New York's International Airport will be Northwest Orient Airlines' Orient Express, the only continuous through flight across the Pacific to the Orient. You are away on the high road to the Orient, traveling in the world's most luxurious airliner. Settle down to a comfortable flight and let attentive stewardesses take care of your every wish. The delicious meals served add to the complete enjoyment of the trip. From New York and Washington, Northwest serves principal cities across the United States to Canada, Hawaii, Alaska, and the Orient. Settle back and enjoy the ever-changing scenery. World to the west are Japan, Korea, Okinawa, Formosa, Hong Kong, and the Philippines. Majestic Mount Fujiyama welcomes you to Japan, your first stop in the Orient. And then Tokyo, capital of Japan, one of the world's three largest cities. Your Orient Express lands at Tokyo's International Airport, gateway to the Orient. And you set foot on Japanese soil, only 33 hours from New York. The huge plane is unloaded and the cargo taken to the customs office in the terminal building. Northwest Orient Airlines attendants will help you arrange accommodations and sightseeing trips around Tokyo and to nearby cities. You are soon downtown in Tokyo, and in this modern building is Northwest's city ticket office and one of Tokyo's newest and most modern hotels, providing excellent Western-style accommodations. Tokyo, with over seven million inhabitants, is an interesting blend of East and West. Ginza Street is as well known throughout the world as the Champs-Élysées, Piccadilly Circus, or Fifth Avenue. On Ginza Street are huge department stores. One has occupied its present location for 340 years. The streets off the Ginza reveal the color you're looking for and the real Orient. There are hundreds of shops where one can have a wide choice of Western or Oriental merchandise. Exquisite vases compete with traditional Japanese dolls and other gift items for the traveler who wants to bring something different back home. Near the center of Tokyo are the grounds of the Imperial Palace, surrounded by feudal walls rising from an age-old moat. The first castle inside these walls was built in 1457, 35 years before Columbus discovered America. Tokyo is a city of parks, and Ueno Park surrounds a picturesque lake in the heart of the city. A It is when night settles over Tokyo that the mood of the city captures you.
The Japanese people are devoted to the theater, and you'll find that a Japanese review, such as this one called Summer Dance, is a lavish stage presentation. These productions rival those on Broadway in America. Sometimes Japanese historical characters appear and a completely different style of acting takes place. The review is in many scenes and performances run from early morning to late at night. Nearby Tokyo are many places of interest, easily reached. Within a day's journey are Kamakura, Inoshima, Lake Hakone, Chiba, Niko, Osaka, and other points of interest. Many of Japan's railroads are electrified, and most areas can be conveniently reached by connecting airlines, rail, or highway. As you travel through the country, you'll see that every inch of soil is used for the growing of food. Each man's field is diked off to preserve the much needed water. Japan's silk is one of her principal exports. Hundreds of small factories are scattered throughout the country where the silk is processed. The cloth is washed in a stream to fix the dye. Up on the bank, the boats dry on racks. Today, most of Japan's silk is exported. You may buy one of these scarves in your hometown someday. A short drive from Tokyo is Kamakura, noted for its ancient temples and shrines. The most famous Buddha in all the world is the Daibutsu, or Great Buddha. This honored shrine is 50 feet high and is cast of bronze. The eyes, made of pure gold, look down through lids four feet long. Inoshima Island, just a few miles from Kamakura, is a place of picturesque beaches, cliffs, and inlets. Swimming is excellent in the warm waters of the bay. A visit to Fuji Hakone National Park is a delightful side trip. The climate is invigorating, and Lake Hakone is popular for excursion boat trips. Here is some of Japan's unforgettably beautiful lake and mountain country surrounding Mount Fujiyama. Hotels are numerous and comfortable for a stay of several days. Southeast of Tokyo is the Chiba Peninsula, an area of fishing harbors and sandy beaches. The fishing industry is essential in Japan to supply the home demand for food. Japanese fisheries, therefore, are among the most productive in the world. Nearly a million Japanese fishermen make their living from the sea. At Nikko, the Toshogu Shrine is reached through the Yomeiman Gate. Toshogu is one of the most beautiful shrines in the world. The colorful, painstaking detail work put into the buildings is astounding. These carvings look as if they were new, but they have been exposed to the weather for generations. In the temple grounds, the passage of each hour is announced as of old. Next to their love of art, the Japanese are justly famous for their love of nature. Throughout Japan, flowers are in abundance and are meticulously tended and admired. The 
colorful kimono with the traditional obi on the back seems almost a part of the beauty of this garden. In a Nikko school ground, children play on a century-old Japanese swing. From the town of Nikko, a cable car takes you up to Lake Chuzenji, 4,000 feet above sea level. The lake and town nestle at the foot of picturesque Mount Nantai. Kagon Waterfall, 300 feet high, is the outlet of Lake Chuzenji. The train ride to Osaka is a pleasant one through a rich farming area. Nearly half the working population of Japan are farmers. The average family has no more than two and a half acres of land. This 16th century castle in Osaka was once the location of the government of Japan. Today, Osaka is one of Japan's busiest cities, a center for commerce and industry, and with a population of several million. At Northwest's Tokyo headquarters, a courteous staff is ready to help you. From Japan, gateway to the Orient, Northwest Orient Airlines flies regular trips to Korea, Okinawa, Formosa, the Philippines, and via connecting routes to Hong Kong. Hong Kong will be our next stop. Approaching the South China coast, we see the British Crown Colony of Hong Kong, our first view of this famous crossroads of the Orient. The colony is composed of a small group of islands at the mouth of the Pearl River, the Kowloon Peninsula, and new territories on the China mainland. Today, this thriving trade center, where East meets West, boasts a colorful and varied population of over two million. Ships from every corner of the world anchor beside the familiar junks and sampans of the Orient. The principal city on the island is Victoria, clinging to the steep slope between the harbor and Victoria Peak. Along the waterfront is the business district. From the heights above Victoria's residential section, you can see the crowded Chinese city along the waterfront. Hong Kong is famous for its colorful rickshaws from which you can see the sights of the city, and for its famous flower street, an entire street banked with flowers. This street is typical of many Chinese cities. Here is where the water population of Hong Kong lived on their junks and sandpans, the same as their ancestors did for generations past. At Repulse Bay, down the coast, is one of the most picturesque bathing beaches in the world. From Hong Kong Harbor, you can take a side trip of about 40 miles down the China coast to the Portuguese colony of Macau. Excursion boats make regular trips, threading their way past countless junks. Then the city of Macau comes into view. Along the main street, near the docks, only the Chinese water boys are active under the noonday sun. Macau has an age-old history of conquest, and modern buildings contrast with the ancient landmarks of the city. From Tokyo to Manila, the route of Northwest Orient Express continues south through Okinawa. Leaving the Manila airport, you travel down beautiful Dewey Boulevard to the city. Across Manila Bay are Corregidor and Bataan Peninsula. 
Near the center of Manila are the government buildings where the business of the Republic of the Philippines is carried on. The hotels of Manila and the other principal cities of the Philippines compare favorably with those at home. From the Manila Hotel, you get a wonderful view of the harbor. Beautifully landscaped grounds around the hotel, complete with a modern swimming pool. Manila is a busy city, trade center for an area that extends throughout the islands. The traffic here will remind you of the rush hour back home, except for the presence of a calesa or caratella now and then. A trip through the market area will give you a good picture of the colorful city that is Manila today. You'll find many shops where unique products of the Orient will be offered at exceptional prices, and you'll want to bring home some things as a reminder of the exotic Orient. These fans and combs reflect the early Spanish influence in the Philippines. Within the Intramuros, or walled city, the Spaniards lived when the islands were Spanish possessions, Today, the ruins of this ancient church stand as a monument to the sacrifices of the Philippine people. The University of the Philippines on the outskirts of Manila is the most modern institution of higher education in the Republic. 8,000 students are enrolled from all over the islands. Many different cultural groups are represented in the student body and often folk dances are presented. These students dance the tinikling, a favorite dance in the province of Leyte. The dance imitates the movement of the long-legged tickling birds as they walk between grass stems or run over tree branches. The object of the dancers is to keep their feet from being caught between the poles. Another popular dance is the salakot, named for the wide-brimmed hat which figures prominently in the dance. The Balara Park swimming pool near the university is one of the most beautiful to be found anywhere in the world. At Manila's Sports Palace, Hailai thrills thousands, six days a week. Hailai is one of the fastest and most strenuous games in the world. The players catch the ball and throw it sometimes 200 feet to the end wall, where it rebounds with terrific speed and must be caught by a member of the opposing team. In Manila, you can enjoy good food, either American, Chinese, or Filipino. These guests are dining on the terrace of the Manila Hotel overlooking Manila Bay. The Northwest Orient Airlines ticket office in Manila will be glad to arrange trips to other islands by inter-island airlines or steamship companies. The choice trip of many visitors is a flight south from Manila to Cebu City, Bipolog, and Zamboanga. The air route flies between several islands in the Cebuian Sea. First stop is Cebu City with its deep harbor which accommodates the largest ocean-going freighters. It is the principal trading and industrial center of the Visayan provinces. Cebu City is second largest in the Philippines.
coastwise ships take on cargo here for other ports in the islands. The main products are corn, copra, fish, sponge, and cement. These ocean-going freighters load for far distant ports where the products of Cebu find a market. In front of the city hall, the enclosed Cross of Magellan commemorates Magellan's landing at Cebu in 1521. Beside vast coconut groves, Cebu farms produced considerable corn for local use. Our plane is ready for the next hop to Depollock. The plane makes a short crossing over the Mindanao Sea. The Pollock is surrounded by coconut groves and boasts a fine swimming beach where there are the ever-present outriggers and fishermen. Airborne over Mindanao, coconut plantations stretch as far as the eye can see. The lush, brilliant vegetation that covers these islands makes an unforgettable sight. Here, an almost untouched jungle of dense growth extending to the edge of the coral-studded beaches. The city of Zamboanga on Mindanao, southernmost island of the Philippines, is a busy port and is the garden city of the south. Zamboanga is a cosmopolitan city where many different nationalities mingle in an atmosphere of tolerance and friendly business rivalry. Zamboanga provides visitors with a modern hotel, which is picturesquely located to give you an excellent view of the harbor. For our entertainment, a group of Zamboanga students staged an authentic moral wedding. The bride receives the bows of her attendants. The bride herself is resplendent in moral costume. The groom and his attendant and the priest enter. When everybody is assembled, the priest performs the wedding ceremony. A simple act of inscribing a circle over the bride's head with the groom's hand. Now that the marriage ceremony is over, dancing is in order. Although many dances may be performed, the Moro wedding dance called Kandingan is traditional. Zamboanga is the fishing harbor where hundreds of Moro fishing boats called Vintas crowd together along the shore. These boats are home to their owners who, following the age-old custom of their ancestors, prepare to leave the shelter of Zamboanga Harbor, their destination some distant cove or inlet where the fish are plentiful. They frequently sail as far north as Luzon in search of sharks, turtles, and other forms of sea life. The distinctive and colorful Vinta sails are a familiar sight in the islands. Six hundred miles north by air is Manila, where your Northwest Orient Airlines Orient Express is waiting for you. Because you travel northwest, your stay in the Orient will be filled to the very last minute with interesting and relaxing experiences. Northwest Orient Airlines, Orient Express, flies the high road to the Orient.
shortest route across the Pacific and across the USA.